The Bible says, if you, then God will. There is a part that we have to play. God has already did everything that he's going to do when he sat down at the right hand of the Father. When Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father, after he shed his blood for us and said, it is finished, he has already defeated death, hell, and the grave. But the enemy will come to try to torment us and try to take us down a pathway that is not of God. And we have to work with God in our life. We are co-laborers with Christ. And we are co-laborers in His Word, and when we work the Word, the Word will work in our life. And there are principles and there are things that are kingdom principles. Thank God for denominations. Thank God for organizations. Thank God for all the, the things that people are doing in the earth. But what we need to get back to as the people of God is get back to kingdom living. We need to get back to the kingdom way of doing things. We need to get back to the words of Jesus and what he taught us. We need to get back to the letters uh, and the epistles and the things that were taught, taught from Genesis all the way to Revelation. We need to be a kingdom people and a kingdom church to get kingdom results in our life. And there is this, uh, there's this principle, and there's many principles throughout the Bible. There's the principle of sowing and reaping. There's the principle of prayer. There's the principle of faith. There's the pr many, many, many principles, kingdom principles that Jesus came to teach us. There's a principle of, so, uh, of serving. There is many different principles, but there's this honor principle and the, the concept and even the, the, the action of honor has, has been lost. And I, I feel like in our society, in our homes, it's been lost in the general public. There's so much disrespect honor and so much disrespect that is going on. And last week we talked about it starting, honor starting and being restored in the home and being restored between the husband and the wife and being restored to the children. And as we were talking about that last week, I, I felt as I was praying that this week we were going to begin to talk about honoring people, just honoring people in general, because it's easy to dishonor and disrespect somebody that don't look like you, like the same thing you like, like the political party you like, on and on and on. The list goes on and on and on. It's easy to disrespect and dishonor people and to walk actually in this spirit of dishonor. And as we were talking last week, and, and, and I was praying about this week, I, I really thought that I was going to be talking about what the Bible says about honoring people in general. Because sometimes it's hard to honor people. It's hard to honor people that we don't agree with. But as I was praying, I felt that the Lord began to speak to my heart that before we can ever possibly walk in this honor principle, we got to deal with the dishonor that we're allowing to go on in our life. Now, there's a lot of things that we can't control, but what we can control is what's going on in our life. We can't control what anybody else says or what anybody else, has do anybody else does, but we can control what's going on in our life. And many times in our life, we say, what's the use? How many has ever said that? What's the use? You've got so fed up with somebody. You got so fed up with this. You got so fed up with that, that we say, what's the use? And we dishonor the principles in the word of God because of what somebody else does or does not do based on what somebody says or does not say. And here's the thing about the principles in the word of God. They work if you work them, no matter what's going on in the earth. No matter what's going on in the news media, no matter what's going on in the economy, the, the principle of sowing and reaping will, will work no matter how much inflation goes, how high it's going to go, or no matter what happens in the earth, we are a part of a kingdom, and the kingdom of God is not sustained by the things that are happening in our natural realm. The kingdom of God is a supernatural realm, and many times as the church, we have lost the connection with the supernatural. We've lost our connection with the Holy Spirit. We've lost our connection with the kingdom way and the kingdom principles. It's something that we can go in here, but we really don't walk in it because that don't really work for us, and we haven't seen that work, so we pick and choose what we want to live out of the Bible. But here's the thing. If we will begin to operate in the principles of God, we will begin to see the promises of God fulfilled. If we will begin to honor the principles and we will begin to honor the Word of God if no one else honors the Word of God. If everybody else says, you know what, you can't really, you can't really get too, you can't get really get too uh, uh, radical in worship, and you can't really do this because you're going to scare people, and nobody will come to your church, and nobody will do this, and nobody will do that. When God cares about people, but many times we've honored people's preferences more than we've honored the word of the living God. 
And we become a church, and, and I'm talking about the church as a whole, we become a church that tries to appease people and feel good without honoring and, 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 and blessing the name of the Lord. And whenever we try to honor people and the preferences of ourselves or people, and we, we don't walk in the true kingdom honor of the Lord, we have, a, we have buildings that are filled with no power. We have buildings that are filled with sick people and broken people. And God wants the sick and the broken. We all are sick and broken in some way, but the kingdom is a kingdom of restoration. It is a kingdom of life. It is a kingdom of healing. It is a kingdom of miracles. It is a kingdom of signs and wonders and miracles. And we've been sent to this earth as ambassadors. And as ambassadors, my goodness, we are backed by all of heaven if we will honor the principles of the Word of God. And what's happened is we have allowed, and I've said this the last few weeks, that we have allowed such dishonor in our lives. We have operated in dishonor and think that it's okay, and, 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 and we have rejected even the Word and the principles of God. And this has kind of been our theme scripture of everything that we've been talking about. It's in Matthew chapter 13, verse 57 and 8, verse number 57 and verse number 58 that we've taken out of this text here this morning when you look at Matthew 13 and see the parables of what Jesus was teaching you see that there comes a time that Jesus is returning to his own hometown and he is rejected at Nazareth he is he's rejected in this place where he has just become common and people know him and it's his hometown and they're that isn't that the the carpenter's son and isn't he this and isn't he that and they 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 see all this stuff how many know that many times you can't honor somebody in your life when you look at all their dirt and honestly we're all made from the dirt but there's even, a, there's even a principle in the Bible that there was, a, that there was a field, but in that dirty field, there was a treasure. And I'm here to say this morning, there is a treasure on the inside of every person. And a lot of times we get caught up in the dirt of things and the, and the bad. And listen, there are, evil, there are evil things and there are evil people and there are people that have rejected the ways of God. But sometimes even in our life when we have a little disagreement, thank God this is not going on here. Uh, if it is, I don't know about it, so don't come tell me about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Something needs to be handled. The Bible tells us how to handle offenses and, and, and things in, in the book of Matthew. There's a way to handle those things. Uh, according to the word, and if we would honor that word in our life with each other and have some, dis, uh, have some respect for one another and be able to listen to one another and hear with the ear of the Spirit and work through our differences, we wouldn't have families that are even split in the earth today. It's true, and we talked about that extensively last week when it comes to marriage and leading to divorce, and then our children can't respect uh, their teachers, and they can't respect their coaches, and they can't respect their parents, and they won't respect their dad, and they won't respect their mother, and many times it's this spirit of dishonor that's been operating, but even in the dirty field, there is treasure, and to get to the treasure, you have to dig in some dirt a little bit. And, and Jesus was coming into his own hometown when he was coming into Nazareth. They were speaking of just how common he is, yet he was the son of the living God. They were speaking of all these things uh, that were going on. And if you read this in, in, in its full context and you see this leading up to this passage of Scripture, you can see that Jesus was just doing many mighty miracles. You can see that, that Jesus would go into places. He would go into towns. And the Bible says that everybody got healed. Imagine that concept in the earth today. Imagine a church. A church is not a building. It's not brick. It's not mortar. We are the church individually. We come together collectively, and we come together not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some, according to Hebrews 10, 25, that when we come together, even so much more as we see the day approaching of him coming, that there is a corporate anointing that one can chase a 1,000, but two can chase 10,000. And I don't argue with people that tells me, hey, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. No, you don't 
have to go to church to be a Christian, and I don't have to do this, and I don't have to do that, and I'm still going to go to heaven. And, and, and people just disrespect even today the house of God because of pastors that have failed and ministers that have failed. But my Bible tells me that when we begin to come together, uh, one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand, that in that place of coming together and getting in one mind and one accord, there is power in that place. What would happen if a group of people would really begin to get together and we would begin to honor God with all that we are and we would begin to honor each other? I believe that heal, sick people would be healed. I believe the blind would be, their eyes would be open. I believe that the miracles of Jesus would begin to be unleashed again today in a greater way. In a greater way than we've ever seen. But when Jesus came into his own hometown, the Bible says, so they were offended at him. That's a whole other sermon on offense, but don't allow offense to take root in your life because it hurts nobody but yourself. As a person that has lived with offense in my heart and looking back over my life, when I finally got free of it early on in my walk with the Lord, I began to realize and see that that offense only kept me out. It was like an offense. It built a fence between me and the blessings of God. I let what somebody did to me in five minutes keep me in bondage for 22 years. <laughs> I'm just on the other side of the fence, just banging my head on the fence because of so-and-so. Couldn't honor the Word of God to release the offense, not by my own strength, not by my own grace, but by being in the presence of God and receiving a love that overcomes and a grace that empowers me to honor His Word and His principles to walk in the place of freedom. Can I go ahead and declare today, if you will receive grace, if you will open your heart to the grace of God, if you will open your heart to the way of God and the Word of God, and you will not allow, allow the offense to hold you out from the blessing Things, you may never get an apology from someone else, but you can walk in the freedom of God. Many people are waiting till they come and apologize to me. That is dishonoring the Word of God. That is not walking in the honor principle because even Jesus said, bless those that persecute you. Bless those that right, uh, wrongfully use you. Bless your enemies. Pray for them. That even if we can honor that principle, it would unlock something in the spiritual realm. But we are more in tune, including myself. We are more in tune with the natural realm than the spiritual realm. I saw somebody post something on Facebook. It was like, boom, a light bulb went off. They said, you know what? We're more familiar with the spirit of Jezebel than we are Jesus. We're so caught up in what everybody else is doing and what this is happening and that is happening that we lose the reality of the kingdom that it does not matter what anybody else is doing. Yes, things that people do can affect us in a certain way, but when we begin to get in tune with the Word of God and begin to get, begin to get in tune with the spiritual realm of heaven, God will make a way even when there seems to be no way. It is honoring the Word of God. So they were offended, the Bible says. The Scripture says in Matthew, it says that they were offended. Where are we at? So they were offended at Him, but when Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor. Say it with me, honor. honor. Say it with me again, honor. He is not without honor except in His own country and in His own house. Now, He did not do many mighty works. It didn't say, it didn't say, that he wasn't able to do, it says, not because he had a limit of power, but he was not able to do many mighty works there because of what? Their unbelief. He was not able to do many mighty works because of their unbelief, their unbelief in who he really was, their unbelief in really what was going on, their unbelief led to this thing of dishonor. And when you dishonor, you don't value. And when you don't value, it blocks you from the value of even what was in Jesus' life. He was full of the Spirit without measure, the Scripture says. If he would have just been honored, everybody, we've seen it before, everybody got healed. Why? Because they honored him. They honored him. And this honor principle has been lost. If it hasn't been lost, it's been devalued. It's been no longer really lived by. 
our society and even our churches, and uh, we become more about ourselves instead of God. And, and the Bible says that Jesus was rejected even in his own hometown. He was rejected in many ways, in many forms, in many fashions. And any time we reject the Word of God, we are rejecting Jesus. Because the Scripture tells us that He was the Word made flesh. And the Bible says God watches over His Word to perform it. He watched over Jesus even when He was on the earth to perform His Word. And His Word says by His stripes we were healed. So that tells me this, that God has already provided healing for each and every one of us. That we've got to honor Him in a way that we begin to walk in it. That we've got to honor Him that when we reject the Word of God, we are rejecting Jesus. And the Bible says that when Jesus was without honor, even in His own ta- hometown, He didn't do many mighty miracles. And when we honor Jesus, we get many mighty miracles. But when we dishonor Jesus, we don't get the many miracles of God because the kingdom of heaven does not support dishonor. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, does not support dishonor. Jesus came to the earth. He was tempted, the Bible says, in every way that we were tempted, yet he was without sin. How is it possible? Well, he was was God's son. He had a special anointing on his life. But he had the flesh just like we had the flesh, have the flesh. He has a will just like we have a will that even in the garden he was sweating drops of blood, but he said, not my will, my father's be done. I can tell you in that moment, according to the scriptures, that Jesus was not questioning what the will of heaven was. He knew what his father had sent him to do. He knew that he was sent from his father to redeem mankind. He knew the purpose and the plan that God had for him. And he said, not my will, but yours be done. In that moment, he honored his father's will more than he did his own will, more than he did his own flesh, more than he did his own discomfort, more than he did his own preferences. He did not reject his father. And we wouldn't come out and say, we, oh, I just reject God. I just reject this or reject that. But you and me in our life, anytime we reject a principle in God's word, anytime our preference does not line up with the, with the principle of God and we choose our preference and we choose our comfort over the scripture, in that moment we have rejected what God has for us because in that place of honor is where miracles can begin to take place in our life. There was a time in my life that I had so much offense and I had so much hurt and I had so much bitterness in my life against my stepfather. And I was pointing at everything that he had done in my life, all the bad things and the wrong things. And I began to pray, God, when is he going to apologize? When is he going to repent for what he's done to me? And the Lord met me in that place of prayer. And he said, when are you going to repent for what you've done? Because you cannot control what anybody else does, but you can control what you do. And in this moment, will you honor my word and love someone that you feel like you can't love? I'm going to tell you right now, I wrestled with that. Not a couple of days. I wrestled with that for a few weeks. Get behind me, Satan. That ain't, the, that, ain't the, that ain't the Lord talking to me. You know, all these things in our minds try to talk us out of the Word of God. Well, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can, I don't really know if that's God. I don't, I, I don't know. The devil's not telling you to be kind. Well, I kind of feel like the, the Lord told me to give this amount of money to so-and-so. Well, the devil sure ain't telling you to give nobody no money. <clears throat> and I remember wrestling with God for weeks and weeks. And I kept coming back to the presence of God just as I was. And I remember receiving the grace of God to release something that I couldn't do on my own. Does not make human sense. The Lord said, I want you to make a list of the good things. We ain't want to hear that. Because all we can see is the bad things. There's a treasure in the dirt. What they do with their dirt is between them and God. What you do with your dirt is between you and God. But when you deal with the hurt, when you deal with the dirt, when you deal with the offense by honoring the word of God. And I remember trying to get up the nerve to go and say, you know what? My little list I had to just honor. To just honor a man that I felt was so dishonorable. 
dishonor, just, just, just a situation that I just thought was so dishonorable. Didn't deserve any honor. Just so much disrespect there. How can you respect someone that... does all these things. How can you do that? And I remember the Lord saying, son, you can't in your own strength. But my grace is sufficient. And I had this list of all this bad. I had to throw that list away. And I had to do what was in my control. I made this list. I came home. I was in ministry school. I came home from ministry school. and You know, there was so much disrespect and dishonor that I had dealt out. And in the natural, you know, I, I, they deserve it. Aren't you glad God doesn't give us what we deserve? Bless God, I'm going to give them what they deserve. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And how does that leave us? Worse off than when we started. We feel good for a few minutes. But yet, deep down on the inside... We're not operating in the kingdom way. We're not honoring the kingdom principle. I remember coming home. I had a day, my days off for Monday from ministry school. I come home. Today's the day I'm going to do this. I don't know how. I don't know how the opportunity is going to present itself. I tried to throw that bad list away, and the enemy kept bringing it back. You going to do this? You really going to do this? You know that pride that rises up? Bless God, I'll repent when you repent. When you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. Oh, this stuff is all up in the church and the people of God. And we wonder why God ain't moving, why God ain't doing this, why God ain't doing that. It's because we've become so full of ourselves, And in the natural, it seems right. But let me remind us that we're in this world, but not of this world. And if we want to operate according to the world system, we'll get what the world produces. But if we want to humble ourselves under the hand of a mighty God, He said, I will exalt you in due season. So here I go, and the devil's saying, you, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you going to do that? And I had my little list, and it was all in my head, and I wondered how this is going to be. And I'm like, well, if God gives me an opportunity, God, if you give me an opportunity, I'll do it. I tried to stay away from the opportunity. You know what I mean? And then they asked me. They said, hey, I don't know why I'm sharing all this. It's sensitive. I mean, it's sensitive. Like, I'm just putting things out there. and It's not just about me. It's, it's other people, too. But... God gave me an opportunity because they asked me, hey, can you, can you drive me out to Coon Dogs? Y'all remember Coon Dog Auto Parts? <laughs> well, I grew up in Hollywood. I want to be a professional wrestler. I was going to be the Hollywood Hammer. But y'all heard that story? I like to relive it every now and then. <laughs> Thank God I didn't become a professional wrestler. But anyway, I grew up in Hollywood, Georgia. Can you drive me out Coon Dogs? <sighs> yes. I'm in the car. The Holy Spirit's like, now's your time. How are you doing today? Coondog's not that far from where I lived. It's only a couple of miles. Holy Spirit's like, hey, you got a few moments. You better get it. <laughs> I didn't do it. Didn't do it. Couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. I left that afternoon and was driving back to ministry school in Gwinnett County where I was going to ministry school, and I was driving back, and I just started crying. I just started crying. Because like I was, Lord, I missed my opportunity. You gave me that opportunity to honor what you told me to do and honor your word. And I let that opportunity go. And I was just crying out to the Lord, and I was, I was just crying. And I'll never forget the Spirit of God whispered so sweet to me. Because growing up as a kid, man, if I ever blew it, I was in big trouble sometimes for days, and I needed that. God disciplines those he loves, but the Lord handles situations so much different than we do, and I was just crying. The Lord whispered to me, it's okay. I'll give you another chance, and I remember the day the Lord gave me another chance, and I looked into the eyes of someone that I had so much bitterness and unforgiveness and all these things that I've been trying to deal with, and I got my list out, and I said, hey, you know what? I didn't get it out. It was in my mind. 
in this moment, the grace of God came on my life. And here was my honor, opportunity to honor the Word of God. And in that moment, I said, you know what? I need to let you know that I'm sorry for the way I've treated you when I was growing up. I was disrespectful. I cussed you. I said names. I even told you that I hated you. I let those words come out of my mouth. But you know what? You always made sure there was food on the table. You always made sure there was a roof over our head. You always did. And I just started naming the good things instead of all the bad things. And I saw something begin to break in the natural because something was breaking in the spirit. But I can't tell you what broke off of my life in that moment. It was like almost instantly I began to feel the moving of God on the inside of me, breaking things off of me. And as the days and the weeks and the, and, and, and the months moved on, did I, ever, did I ever have things that try to crop back up? Did I ever have things that tried to pull me back into this place of hurt and bitterness and all these things? Absolutely. But you know what I did? Because by the grace of God, I was able to do it in that moment. I began to rise up in a greater strength. Why? Because I was no longer longer rejecting the Word of God. I was honoring the Word of God, and because I honored the Word of God, I honored God, and God said, if you honor me, I will honor you. And we've allowed these things by what other people do, what other people say. I was going to maybe talk about it today, but not. You see the life of David, how he honored Saul and all the things that Saul did in his life. And he even had an opportunity to kill Saul. But in that moment, he did not do it when he could. There are so many principles of honor throughout the Bible where we see God working miracles when we honor the word of the Lord. And when we reject, even Jesus was rejected in his own hometown, and we've lost this principle of honor, and the results are what? Moral decay. The results of dishonor are great disrespect. The results of dishonor have become a godless society, that we are our own God. We do what we want to do. Whatever feels right to you, do it. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, there is a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to death. That should be the compass of our life that when we're feeling something and we think that so-and-so deserves so-and-so, in that moment we should pull out the word of the Lord and say there is a way that seems right to a man, but is this going to lead to death according to what God says in his word? of how I'm to handle my wife, how I'm to handle situations that are difficult, how I'm to handle the, the, the staff that God has placed under me, how I'm to handle the board God has placed under me, how I'm to handle the children that God has blessed me with, how I'm to handle the relationships that, I, that I'm in in my life, how I'm to handle the stranger off the street or the person that don't believe the same way that I believe, how that I handle them in every moment of my life will determine if I'm walking in the honor principle or if I'm bringing disrespect even to the Christian household and there are a lot of Christians that don't even believe in the principles of God because we've some become so worldly instead of kingdom abiding why am I so passionate about this? Because you matter and you are important. Your family matters. Your marriage matters. Your children matters. And we're not waiting on God to come down here and fix something. God is waiting on His called ones, His chosen ones. The Bible says the entire creation is groaning. What? For the manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. When He comes back the second time, it's too late. It is time to get it right right now. He has made a way for us to honor him he has graced us and empowered us by the holy spirit the results of dishonor is a lack of power of god in our life the honor culture is very is the very culture of heaven it's the very culture of the kingdom it's the very culture of jesus it's the very culture of the father the son and the holy spirit jesus modeled this principle of honor it's a code of honor. It's a code that we live by that unlocks the supernatural in our life, in our families, in our marriage, and in our home. But we've tolerated dishonor. And the reality is the measure of your reward is re determined by the measure of your honor. What, well, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, Pastor? Where's that in the Bible? It's actually all throughout the Bible. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six. 6... 
that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. There's also many scriptures throughout the Bible that talks about when we, when we do the Word of God, there are blessings that flow in our life, and the blessings of God are the rewards of God. And sometimes we can sit back and we can wonder why this person's more blessed than that person. And we all go through trials and valleys. We all go through ups and downs. We all go through highs and lows. We all go through seasons of of being tested. And we all go through uh, different, different, different areas and different levels in our life. But when you come back to what the kingdom is all about, this this culture of honor, we see that it's a principle that will bring rewards in our life. That God is really no respecter of person. And if we're not at a place that we want to be, we can't sit back and say, well, why did so-and-so get blessed this or there? We've got to begin to take a look at the on the inside and see where's the measure of our honor. Oh, I'm willing to go there, Lord, but I'm not really willing to go over here because of what so-and-so did. That's easier said than done. But as somebody that's had to live through that in my life, I didn't get it right the first time. I didn't get it right. The first time God spoke to me, I didn't jump up and say, oh, my gosh, i got to go do this. Thank God for the people that do that. (laughs) Thank God for the people that are so close and their flesh has been so put under that they don't hesitate. That once God says it, they they do it. It doesn't matter what it is. They will write the check. They will do this. They will serve this person. They will whatever it is. Thank God for that. I wasn't there yet. But God will bring rewards into our life. And the measure of our reward many times is determined by the measure of this honor principle. I know that in Luke chapter 6, verse 37 through 38, the Bible says this. These are the words of Jesus. It says, judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, good measure. Press down, press down. Shaking together, shaking together, and running over, running over. I just want us to get how good God is. (laughs) He's like, listen, judge not, judge not. It's easy to judge. It's easy to turn on the TV and judge. It's easy to hear the documentary and judge. It's easy to just judge. And I know we say, hey, you don't judge the person, but you judge the fruits. Jesus said you'll know them by the fruits. And, I, and it's true. You know them by their fruits. That's what Jesus said. But sometimes we can use that as an excuse to judge a person because we all got some bad fruit. Is yours as stinky as the other person? Attracting all them little fruit flies, you know what I mean? things get on my nerves should have been a ninja instead of a professional wrestler even though I wasn't a professional wrestler but judge not and you shall not be judged condemn not and you shall not be condemned forgive and it will be forgiven give and it will be given give and it will be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together running over will be put into your bosom listen to this for the same measure that you use it it will be measured back to you for the same measure that you use what the same measure that you use your free will and your choices because you know what he says give and it will be given you don't have to give if you don't want to give well God can do anything well he can't make you give it's in his word it's in his principle it's in his law God does not violate the way he set up the earth he does not violate his word and he said behold I give you choices blessing and life death and death and curses you get to choose and so he says the same measure it will be measured back to you the same measure that you use it that you use the word you use your ability to give you use the gift that God has put on the inside of you you use the principles of the word of God that you walk in them and operate in them the measure that you do it listen God never lacks he never his well never runs dry if we are dry it has nothing to do with God and everything to do with me and you because where are we gonna stop God never stops pursuing he's never stops releasing his grace and his presence and his power in our life it is available behold you can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy you have to come to the throne of grace the measure that you come to the throne of grace 
You don't have to wait till a pastor preaches you into the throne of grace. You don't have to wait till a Bible study leads you into the throne of grace. Thank God for all of that. You can't just come to the throne of grace on a Sunday or a Wednesday. You can come to the throne of grace at every moment of your life if you honor the word of the living God. He says the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And the kingdom of God supports thankfulness and generosity. Thankfulness and generosity. Thankfulness and generosity. That even when you can't find something to be thankful for, if you can walk in the honor principle and the principle of thanksgiving unto God, and you know you, everything may be falling apart in your life, but when you can just look and behold His beauty and begin to thank Him, it is a principle of honor to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we see all throughout the Bible this praise principle of honoring God would part seas. We see this praise principle of honoring God when all these armies were coming against the people of God and they didn't have enough resources. They didn't have enough finances. Who am I talking to for a moment? They didn't have enough education, but they had a principle in their life that they were going to honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the Bible says that God would even send ambushes on the enemy and they would turn and flee. Why? Because there is a supernatural presence and power that comes from honoring God. It's so powerful. It's so easy and the kingdom of heaven, it, it doesn't support this spirit of dishonor. The kingdom of heaven is about thankfulness. It's about generosity. It's not about judging and criticizing, which is so a part of our community today. God will always show up at the place of sacrifice. He will always show up at the place of obedience. God will always show up at the place of service. God will always show up at the place of worship. God will always show up at the place of praise. God will always show up at the place of thankfulness. God will always show up at the place of gratitude. So in other words, what I'm trying to say, God always shows up at the place of honor. All this is in honor, this obedience, sacrifice, worship, thankfulness, praise, gratitude. God shows up at the place of honor. And we said it last week, honor must first be restored in the heart and it must be restored in the home. Because to dishonor is to judge. To dishonor is to criticize. The, to, to dishonor is to condemn. The, to dishonor is to talk down to your spouse and talk down to your children. To dishonor can be described in so many ways. It is critical. It is even a critical spirit many times. To dishonor is to constantly complain and not come with a solution. That's dishonoring. Well, let me tell you what's wrong, and let me tell you what you need to do here, and let me tell you this, and let me tell you that, and let me tell you all these things, or let me tell you how bad you are, and let me tell you why this won't work, and let me tell you this, and let me tell you that, and all these kind of things. And when we constantly criticize and we don't come with a solution, it's dishonor. Our world is full of it. Our society is full of it. And we've allowed it into the church. Dishonor is rude and hateful. We all have the flesh, and we all can have a bad moment. But we can't tolerate rudeness and hatefulness. You know what I'm talking about. You see it in your children. Dishonor shows up in the eye roll. Wash these dishes again. You will get another nod on your head. <laughs> no, I don't hit my children. <laughs> Dishonor shows up in the eye roll. We got emojis we send to people. <sniffs> roll our eyes at them. You know, we ain't even got to verbally do it anymore. We can send a picture. My wife does that to me all the time. I send one right back. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She don't do that. Jokingly, she might. Dishonor shows up in the neck, Pop. Y'all got teenagers? That's a common thing. Stiff necked. Finger snapping. Isn't that our generation today? Just finger snapping. Well, you snap your finger at your dog. Hey, come here, come here, come here, come here, Brownie. You know? Dishonor shows up in all these things, and we, we often tolerate it. The spirit of dishonor has not only been tolerated, but in many times it's been celebrated. 
I want you to think about this in our culture today because the enemy tries to pull the wool over our eyes. He just tries to say, well, that's just the way it is. And, you know, that part of the Bible is old-fashioned and you can sleep around and it's okay for children to just go out and date everybody and they can sleep around and see if that's what they want. And we dishonor the Word of God and we call the Word of God old-fashioned and we say that we've got to stay relevant with with the times and we've got to stay relevant with our children because we don't want to lose them. And at compromising the Word of God, we're losing them in the process. Because we don't honor the Word of God anymore. It's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. Kids kids today is celebrated. They will, they will live stream fights on the bus and fights at school. I don't know if that grieves you when you see that kind of thing. Or that makes you want to be like, ah, check this out and look at this. But that grieves me. There are things that probably grieve you that don't grieve me. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm just trying to make a point here. When little kids are on the bus and they're beating the fire out of each other, why do we want to celebrate? Celebrate that and spread it all over the internet. It's not only tolerated, it's celebrated. You look at our TV shows. Was it back in the 80s? Was it the 80s? Jerry Springer came out, early 90s or something. And that's entertainment to see families dishonoring people, see women dishonoring their own bodies, going on national TV to try to find out who the baby daddy is. How dishonoring to individuals and families and people, but in a society we've celebrated that. And it led to reality TV. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it. It led to reality TV that we just want to be in everybody's disrespectful business and see who's cheating on who and who's doing this and doing that. And even as the church, listen, I'm not trying to be a goody two-shoe and everything else. I'm not perfect, but we've lost the honor principle, and because we've lost honoring the Word of God, we have allowed unholiness into our life, and we have we have a lack of holiness and the fear of the Lord, and we wonder why God isn't doing certain things in our life. Have I ever watched Jerry Springer? Yeah, I've had to repent of that. Am I perfect and get everything right? No, but where is the conviction of the Holy Ghost again in the house of God, the people of God? Society. Reality shows. We allow our children to listen to booty-shaking music. I'm just telling you how it is, and we think that's funny, and that's cute, and everything else, and we think that's okay, but behind it is a spirit of dishonor, because you know what? She was made in the likeness and the image of God, and what God gave her is not to shake in front of other people and to get rich over and everything else. We've dishonored even our own selves. We've allowed the celebrities of this world to influence us. Listen, here is what's wrong in the church today, and I know I'm saying what's wrong like I know it all. I don't know it all, but what I begin to realize and see that when we have a society that honors their celebrities more than their mother and their father, we've got an issue. We have got an issue. And the society keeps going into moral decay. And these are the, these are the individuals that's leading, going to lead our country. They're going to lead our homes. They're going to lead, they're going to lead our communities. And, and, and we just allow this dishonor because, man, if I put a stop to this, then my kid might not like me. And you know what? I wasn't called for my kid to like me. I want my kid to like me. They were created to love me and like me. But if I dishonor the Word of God in their presence, I continue to perpetuate, if I'm saying that right, a spirit of dishonor that whatever can be can be when no we are a part of a kingdom and in his kingdom is righteousness joy and peace in the Holy Ghost nobody wants to hear this kind of stuff anymore and you can't preach this in churches anymore because nobody will want to come back and nobody will want to do this but when our role models to our children are celebrities and football players I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but when our when our role models are are, are, are immoral people and not the, the the father and the mother we've got an issue because a lot of times in our pop culture culture in society today women flaunt things and men do things and stuff that bring dishonor not only to themselves but to others and we celebrate that kind of stuff and therefore our children and our our, our youth don't understand modesty because it's not cool to be modest anymore and that's not popular and nobody will like me and the reality is is listen it does not matter if anybody likes you if you've got the hand of God on your life and walk in the power and the presence of God the very people that don't like you will 
come to you one day and say, my life is this and that. Can you help me in the midst of it all? And it's not that we're better than anybody else. It's that we're the exception. And the reason we're the exception is because we honor God. And anybody can be the exception if they will honor God. But we have allowed this dishonor. And it has to be dealt with. It has to be dealt with in our life personally. It has to be dealt with in our, in our homes. You know what? In our society today, everyone cheats like it's a normal thing in the normal way of life. Cheat on their husbands, cheat on their wife, and come to church on Sunday and want a miracle. I know this is heavy, and I know this is not to bring condemnation if your children are listening to certain things or certain things have happened in your life or in your home. It's not here to judge any situation, but things have become normal in our society today. Even in the so-called Christian circles that we can tolerate dishonoring and we can tolerate immorality. We can tolerate unrighteousness and then we can come to church and want God to bring a miracle and a breakthrough in our life. And then we wonder why we walk out the door frustrated and we wonder why God isn't working miracles in our life. And there have been countless people that have left the church and not only the church, they have left their, their, their walk with God and they wonder why God doesn't do this and God doesn't do that and why God didn't answer my prayer and why this happened and that happened. But we're not willing to do what the Bible says and that's to judge our own self and our own life and our own actions and our own character because the reality is that you can get prayed for you can get oil rubbed on your head you can go through every healing line you can go through every healing class you can go through every principle of the word of God but until we begin to act on it and we begin to do it nothing is really going to happen in our life why because Jesus has already did everything he's going to do he's waiting on us to line up with his plan and his will and his purpose and it begins by operating in his principles and saying you know what I'm not going to tolerate this spirit of dishonor in my life anymore. It's the little foxes, the Bible says, that spoil the vine. It's not we're in this blatant dishonor and this blatant disrespect and all these things. It's the little things in our life. Well, it's different for everyone, Pastor. Well, it may be different for everyone. I'm not going to argue that case, but how sensitive are we to the conviction of the Holy Spirit? I don't want to put my convictions on anyone else because if I try to put my convictions on you, it becomes manipulation and you will never walk in it. You will feel condemned about it. You will get mad about it. You will get upset about it. You'll find you another church over it and everything else. God didn't put me here as a pastor to put my convictions off on you, but God put me here to preach the truth of the Word of God and tell us that, you know what, it's the Holy Spirit that will convict our life. And I don't, con I don't bring conviction on people if they don't, if they don't talk like I talk, walk like I walk, pray when I pray, watch what I watch, don't watch what I watch, and all these kind of things. No, conviction is to be a personal thing in your life from the Holy Spirit. But let me ask you this. When is the last time you've been convicted? When is the last time you have been convicted? Because I can tell you this, and I'm speaking for myself. I ain't all that, honey, and I ain't all got it all right. We need conviction every day of our life. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's easy to just disrespect and dishonor the Word of God and tolerate a spirit of dishonor and wonder why. All this stuff that seems normal and it's okay to do, that it even gets preached in pulpits today. That, are, that, that dishonors the word of God when we begin to say nothing else matters but the red letters you have people that preach that and say that and we live in a society where we think that we can go out and live like the devil and come in and just get a prayer and everything's going to be okay no we have to change our minds we have to change our life we come waiting on a miracle but our life is filled with unrighteous living. Yes, he meets us right where, he, where we are and he tries to pull us in. But he graces us not to leave us the same. His power will change us. That we live a life that dishonors God but shows up, show up wanting a miracle. Jesus was dishonored in his own hometown. He couldn't do miracles. 
Oh, they seen the miracles. They knew he was capable of miracles, but they got off in a place they shouldn't be of unbelief and dishonor. See, God's not mad at you today. If you cheated last night on your wife and you're sitting in this room today, God is not mad at you. He's not ready to condemn you to hell. He's waiting on you to run to him and repent of all your sins. He's waiting on you to come to him. He's waiting on you to break the spirit of dishonor. God's not mad at you, but he's waiting on us to break this thing of dishonor. We must come out of agreement with dishonor. We must not tolerate the spirit of dishonor in our life. So how do we do that? I'm going to close quickly. How do we do that? It's repentance. It's repentance. It's repentance and renouncing. Those are the first steps. It's repenting and renouncing. Renouncing is when I no longer have want anything to do with this. You speak with your words. You can speak with your words. I, you know, I renounce this in the name of Jesus. I, I, I don't want anything else to do with this, God. I don't want to live in this way. I don't want to walk in this way. I want to renounce it. It's the, it's the foundation. It's the beginning steps. It's repentance. One of Jesus' first commands or, or, or Jesus' first sermons that he preached is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is here at hand. If you repent, that's how you walk in the kingdom of heaven. That's how you walk in the supernatural. And many times we think repentance is just of my sins and my bad doings. And, and that's true. We repent of our sin. But in our sin is this, this toleration of, of rejecting the word of God and not walking in the principles of honor and principles of his word. God's not mad at us. He's just waiting on us to repent. Because what's in your past will hold you back. And what you don't repent of, you many times will return to. What you don't repent of. Well, Pastor, I prayed that prayer. Repentance is actually not a prayer. Repentance. You can pray a prayer of repentance, but repentance is actually not a prayer. Metanoia, if you look it up in its original language, if you look up the original, the original remaining of repent and repentance, it's to change your mind. And what we've done backwards in the, in, the, in the church, we've tried to change our actions without changing our mind. And then we keep going back over and over and over. We keep trying to modify this and modify that. And man, if I can just get this out and if I can just do that, well, you can't get that out and you can't get free of that without the grace and the power of God in your life. And the only way to get the grace and the power of God in your life is to repent. Change your mind about it. And the only way to change your mind about it is to begin to behold the beauty of God, that He is so much better than anything this world has to offer, that He is so much better than anything anyone can give me. He can fulfill my life so much greater than anything else on this earth. It's a revelation of the goodness and who He is. Repentance brings healing and it brings restoration. Repenting of allowing dishonor and celebrating dishonor in our life before we can even begin to honor people, before we can even begin to honor our wife, before we can begin to even honor our spouse, in a place of purity and transformation, it's going to take repentance. Before I could go on, even in what I felt the Lord was saying, He began to illuminate this thing to me that we've got to deal with the dishonor and not just sweep it under the rug because what have we become so conditioned to in the church today? Come in and hear a good sermon and walk out the same way we walk, walked in. No, God is calling us not to resist or reject his word he's calling us to become a doer of the word and the great thing about God he graces you to do it in this place of relationship with him 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land Healing is in this place of repentance. It's in this place of turning. Repentance is not just a prayer that you pray. It's not just a prayer that you say and that you repeat after me. I'm not going to ask you to repeat a prayer today to repent of dishonor. That's going to have to be something in your heart. It's going to have to bring, it's going to have to be conviction from the Holy Ghost. Because I can't preach you, I'm not good enough to preach you happy or to preach you into repentance or to re preach you into anything else. I need the Holy Ghost to bring fresh conviction on our hearts and our lives because I'm going to say it again. When is the last time you were convicted of something? Repentance 
When you're convicted, it brings repentance in your life. Repentance, you can't skip repentance and think everything's going to be okay. That's why families are in the place they're in. Nobody never really repents. Because when you apologize, you hadn't repented. An apology can go along with repentance, but you can have an apology without repentance. Because I ain't got time to get into it today, but the Bible says godly sorrow leads to repentance. Oh, when you're sorry your spouse found out about you and now you're apologizing and everything else, but your heart has not repented, you're not going to get very far with her because she can read through your... Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the conviction of the Lord. It's BS. You know what BS is? Your belief system. Your belief system is messed up. Our belief system gets messed up. We just believe that now we're not really having any godly sorrow. We're just sorry that she caught us. If we just say we're sorry, then everything's going to be okay. No, the Bible says godly sorrow leads to repentance when you are really broken over what you did because you hurt your spouse, you hurt your children, and you hurt the very heart of God. It will bring you to a place of repentance that you change your mind that you never want to do that again. You know what I believe with all of my heart? That we have lost the conviction of the Holy Ghost, not because of the Holy Ghost, because we have tolerated things in this society and we've gotten so far from the word of God that are in our pulpits today we can't even preach the uncompromised word of God because maybe somebody won't give a tithe or an offering or anything else we have allowed the dishonor and the disrespect to cause us to even disrespect the word of God and we wonder why there's such moral decay why our kids are this and why our kids are that the Bible says in Acts 3, 19, Repent therefore, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that what? Times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. See, the word of repentance is not a prayer. It means to change your mind. And lots of people pray a prayer of repentance but never repent. They pray a prayer. I have been in that guilty seat myself that I prayed a prayer of repentance but never repented. we got to change our minds we got to change our minds. We apologize but never repent. There's a lack of repentance. And whenever there's a lack of repentance, there's a lack of conviction. And we become numb to the conviction of the Holy Ghost. And when we are numb to the conviction of the Holy Ghost, that is a dangerous place. That is a dangerous place. 2 Timothy, and I'm trying to hurry. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 24 through 25. And a servant of the Lord. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Able to teach patience. Able to teach patient in humility. Correcting those who are in opposition to what? The word and the will of God. If God perhaps would grant them repentance. This blew up in my spirit Tuesday night when we were here in prayer. This thing of conviction and repentance. And I believe that it is a word from the Lord. It says, if God would perhaps grant them repentance, because repentance is a gift from God. It is a gift from God. Esau sought for repentance and he could not find it. Repentance is a gift from God. And if we, uh, if we have con constantly resisted repentance and we can't repent anymore, we are in a dangerous place. He said, listen, if God would per perhaps grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their what? Their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. When we are a hearer of the word and not a doer, the Bible actually says we deceive our own self. But this scripture is saying that, that when the correction comes, when the word of God comes, that we would be granted repentance and opportunity to repent so that we may know the truth and that we may come to our senses. And when we come to our senses, we will escape the snare of the devil. The devil wants to put the church in the snare, a wor the world in the snare, a society in the snare. That we just discount the word of God and we pick and choose. And we have a little bit of Jesus here and when we want it and when we're in a crisis. But I'm here to tell you that we have all been called to take up the cross and follow Christ. That is not popular any longer. But 
But you know what? It is the truth of the Word of God. The, the place of the cross is a place of death to ourself. It is a place of allowing our flesh to die in the presence of the Lord. It's a place of allowing the fire of God to begin to burn out everything that's not of Him and allow the conviction of the Holy Spirit to cause us to want to change our mind about the way we walk and the way we think and the way we th do things and the way we live life. He said, listen, that they may be granted repentance, that they may know tr the, the, the truth, come to their senses and escape. When we are snared by Satan, we lose our spiritual senses. We lose our spiritual senses. That's what the Word says here. We become deceived. We are desensitized. Do you know what? We're desensitized to holiness and purity. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. For the pure in heart shall see God. That may be God calling. Shh. When we are snared by the enemy, we're not only desensitized to holiness and purity, we're in a spiritual stupor. And the spiritual stupor is not just outside the walls of the church. The spiritual stupor has been allowed inside the pews in the house of God because we are too concerned about honoring everyone and everything else than we are the presence of the Lord. Repentance is what brings us out. That they may be granted what? The scripture says repentance so that we will know the truth and we can come out of the snare. We can come out of the deception. We can come out of the desensitivity. We can come out of the stupor and the snare of the enemy because he takes us captive to do his will. Repentance brings us out. 